Almighty Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus. Thank you for this opportunity that, uh, that I have to, to be your peace, Lord Jesus. That, uh, that you speak to me the utterances of you, uh, the words you would have me to say to your sheep, to your people. Heavenly Father, speak to them, speak to their hearts. Uh, give them the message that you want them to hear today. Father, that I would uh, hide me behind your cross, Lord Jesus, that, uh, that they would see you and see you only. That I would increase and you would increase, that no flesh would be glorified, that you would be glorified through everything that is put out here today. Father, uh, it's, it's your word. It's entirely uh, God renamed from you. And uh, I'm, just, I'm just sharing with these, uh, with these other people what you laid on my heart to bring. Uh, Heavenly Father, speak through me, Lord Jesus, and, uh, and bless this time. In the name of Jesus, we ask and pray. Amen. Okay, my brothers and sisters, so um, the, if you'll turn in your, in your Bibles to uh, Hebrews chapter 10, and I'll be reading out of the New King James, uh, I like this translation for this passage, uh, and uh, in verse 1, I'm going to read verse 1 through 31 in Hebrews Chapter 10, and uh, the Lord laid this uh, passage on my heart um, a long time ago, and I've had it marked in my Bible, and I thought, well, if I ever get the opportunity, then I would share it with everybody, so uh, uh, that's what I'm bringing today, uh, praise God, through, through him, that he'll speak through me, so if, if y'all stand for the reading of the word of God, and I'll be starting in verse 1, chapter 10. In the book of Hebrews. For the law, having a shadow of the good things to come, and not the very image of things, can never, with these same sacrifices which they offer continually, year by year, make those who approach perfect. For then would they not have ceased to be offered? For the worshipers, once purified, would have had no more consciousness of sins. But in those sacrifices, there is a reminder of sins every year. For it is not possible that the blood bulls and goats could take away sins. Therefore, when he came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you have prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, you had no pleasure. Then I said, Behold, I have come. In the volume of the book, it is written of me to do your will, O God. Previously saying, sacrifice and offering, burnt offerings and offerings for sin you did not desire, nor had pleasure in them, which are offered according to the law. Then he said, Hold, I have come to do your will, O God. He takes away the first, that he may establish the second. By that will, we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. And every priest stands ministering daily and offering repeated, repeatedly the same sacrifices which can never take away sin. But this man, after he had been off, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God. From that time, waiting till his enemies are made foot, his footstool. For by one offering he is perfected forever those who are being sanctified. But the Holy Spirit also witnesses to us, for after he said before, This is the covenant that I will make with them. After those days, says the Lord, I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds I will write them. Then he adds, Their sins and lawless deeds I will remember no more. Now where there is remission of sins, there is no longer an offering for sin. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, he consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, 
having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, and not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as a manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much more, the more, and so the much the more as you see the day approaching. For if we sin willfully, after received, we received the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sin, but a certain fearful expectation of judgment and fiery indignation, which will devour the adversaries. Anyone who has rejected Moses' law dies without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. Of how much worse punishment do you suppose will he be though thought worthy who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, counted the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified a common thing, and insulted the spirit of grace. For we know him who said, Vengeance mine, I will repay, says the Lord. And again, the Lord will judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall in the hands of the living God. That's the word of God. Heavenly Father, Get glory through me today, Heavenly Father. Speak through me. Speak your word. Uh, uh, that word is spirit and truth, and we will worship you in that. And we just uh, thank you for this time. Uh, 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 make make these truths evident to us. We apply it to our lives, to our walk, and, and to our soul. That we write them on the tablets of our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, you may be seated. The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the dis dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow, and is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay, so um, what I have for you today, brothers and sisters, is just the tip of the iceberg. And uh, there's a lot more in here that I'm going to be bringing. I uh, just wanted to, uh, um, I just really wanted to share this with you. So uh, okay. uh, before we start, uh, I wanted to, I wanted uh, I want to give you some background. This, this book, book of Hebrews was written to Jewish believers, okay? They were believers, and they were saved, immature in their faith. So this is leading up to chapter 10, okay? And they were still uh, requiring the so-called milk of the word instead of feeding on the meat of the word. They should have been teaching theirs. Instead, they were needing to be taught, okay? And... Uh, uh, Christian persecution was in time back then, uh, and it was really getting tough to be a Christian. And so, what uh, what what these Jewish believers wanted was to revert back or return back to uh, 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 to the system of sacrifices in their Judaism Judaism roots, to where they wouldn't have to deal with this persecution. So um, that's uh, in, in other words, they wanted to shrink up into their worldly way. So uh, that's what. Um, that's what uh, the writer, I'm, I'm not sure who the writer of Hebrews is, God only knows uh, if uh, some people think it was Paul, but uh, this, this is what, what was written in here to the, the Jewish believers. So I'll start in uh, verse 1. For the law, having a shadow of the good things to come, and the law, you know, the Ten Commandments, uh, Good things come is a uh, gospel, Jesus Christ, salvation, and not the very image of things can never, with the same sacrifices which they offer continually, year by year, make those who approach perfect. Okay, so the law pointed, uh, law uh, pointed that man's need for a savior, that you, you can keep the law, no matter how hard we try. 
there was only one that could keep the law, and it's uh, Jesus Christ, and you know, sinless. But um, okay, so law, like if you break the law, uh, like the law, you go to jail, you go to prison, okay, and you uh, you're gonna you're gonna pay for your crime, okay. So um, uh, what's gonna happen? You're, you'll be in, uh, you're you'll be locked up. You're in bondage, okay. And it, that's that's all. That's how it is when we break break the law of God. You know, we're we're in a sinful state, and so if you're gonna stay in 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 prison if you break the law until the fine is paid. Now, say you murdered somebody, it's gonna be capital capital punishment. You'll be in there the rest of your life. Okay. And the same thing with uh, if if you apply it to um, uh, to salvation, and if you're not saved. Uh, your guilt, if you break the law in one point, you're guilt breaking all the laws. But to, to God, uh, one sin is just as bad as another. So uh, when when you break the law in one point, you're guilty of all of them, and the, the price has to be paid. Like uh, Brother Judy says that, you know, it's like if you have a credit card, you can swipe it now, get whatever you want, but the bill's going to come due. And so one day we're going to have to pay for that. But uh, the law was given to point to our need for a savior. No we could really keep it. And the shadow of the good thing come was for Jesus. So here's the law, okay, and then here's this shadow. And people in the Old Testament live under the shadow of the law. And so uh, until Jesus came uh, and and abolished that law by going to the cross and paying for our sins, that um, uh, that 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 was never negated. Um, so these people, what they would have to do is uh, the Jews, the Jews still celebrate today what's called Yom Kippur, and that means day, and Kippur means atonement. And they had the Day of Atonement, which meant that once a year they would go and have to order a, and bring a sacrifice, and uh, the high priest uh, at the temple would slit his throat and uh, and offer the blood. For the people on the altar, you sprinkle the altar in the holy of holies uh, to um, uh, to uh, uh, it would it would prepare for the coming year. Uh, people uh, pave the way and 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 take people's personal sins and the national sins of the people for the year to come, which kind of sounds thrown up because uh, they haven't committed the sin yet. Okay, so. Um, but these sacrifices they, are, they offered year after year after year couldn't make them perfect to approach God. For God says, draw near to me and I'll draw near to you. You know, God cannot look upon sin. If you're a simple person and he sees your sin, so he, he, uh, he can't look upon you. So um, if, if, the, if, the, if the sacrifices that they made year after year could take away sin, then when they have been ceased to be offered, I mean it would have been it would have been a done deal, but it's not. So what happens is, uh, for the worshiper once purified would have no more consciousness of sins. See by having the having the sacrifices over and over and over again, brought a reminder back to the people that they were sinful and their sins needed to be paid for. Okay, but in uh, but in those sacrifices. There was a reminder of sin every year. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats could take away sin. Okay, so like here's the dilemma right here. Like you read in Leviticus uh, that, uh, and you hear that uh, without the shedding of blood, there's no sacrifice of sin. But here it says, for it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats could take away sin. Well, how is that? Well, because in the Hebrew uh, where it says, uh, that uh, the shedding of blood uh, uh, takes away the sins. It's it just it temporarily removes it or covers it because until the perfect comes, is Jesus, it could have never been taken away. So you've got act like the example you got in the Eve of the Garden, okay? And when God uh, knitted together those uh, skins, or they tried to quickly uh, wouldn't last more than a day. But uh, when God knitted together the animal skins. In the first sacrifice, okay, I temporarily covered them and uh, and just covered over their sins. It didn't make them go away because uh, it you had to be a perfect 
sacrifice for the sins to be taken care of. And so, um, therefore, when, uh, in verse 5, when he came into the world, sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you have prepared for me, and burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, you had no pleasure. Then I said, Behold, I have come in the volume of the book is written of me to do your will. So, think about this. In eternity past, uh, uh, like uh, the G3 conference, where there was God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, uh, God the Father was uh, talking to God the Son, he would say, Hold on, they have to be you that would have to come to make a way to pay for the sins of people that uh, it, it took God to pay God for the sins because it'd be a perfect sacrifice. And right here, no one can keep off and uh, we're, we're all sinful, sinful beings. And uh, even when we were young, uh, the first thing we did was say no. And, uh, uh, and our sinful nature is passed down from Adam. So we inherit that. So uh, we can never be, we can never be perfect where we could go to the cross and pay for our sins. It was only one. So by the power of the Holy Spirit, through the incarnation uh, of the Holy Spirit in Mary, through Mary, came Jesus was born of a virgin. And, uh, and he had, uh, and that was a body that God had prepared for him that uh, he would live sin, uh, sinless life. And uh, maybe in, like the brother of Jesus, and like he never did anything wrong. Like he always like his parents asked him to do something. I mean he's right on. And so uh, it was a high standard to live up to uh, being his brother. And uh, but that's how Jesus was. He was always walking out from uh, from the age that from from when he when he was first born until uh, he went to the cross. He never fell one time. And so. Uh, it says here in offerings and sacrifices, said you had no pleasure. Okay, so like they're they're sacrificing. The Jews were sacrificing the Old Testament, sacrificing for sin over and over and over again. And so um, imagine this, like uh, uh, for Yom Kippur, like uh, and, and like for Passover, you know, you would uh, of course you had your work to do. But on these holy days, like you would have to uh, uh, take them off of work, and of course it's hot and miserable, and uh, and so you're going to you need to uh, uh, you need to take your sacrifice to the temple. So you go out here to your flock, and uh, and uh, I have goats, so uh, you know you just kind of look through them, and like maybe you point you off to the side, and you go, and then and then maybe five, and then and then five, you narrow it down until you find your best one, then you. Clean that all up. You wash it the best you can. Pick it up in your arms. Okay, you carry it to the temple. You not only do you go, but you take your whole family. Okay, so you got to have provisions to go. You got to have to take time to go. A lot of people didn't live uh, right near the temple, so there was uh, a lot of time traveling. Like uh, if you remember when uh, when Jesus uh, uh, Joseph and Mary went uh, for the Passover, that uh, uh, and they took Jesus. That it was like a three day travel. And so, uh, if I believe if I'm not mistaken, so uh, it, it was it was a ways to go. Now, um, this what I was telling you about the young Kipper and and preparing uh, God preparing for the upcoming year for the nation's sins and the personal sins of the people. Okay, well, what if you sin? Like, first of all, check this out. Like, first of all, like, how does that work? Like, uh, do you like you would say like, well. I, I already have my scar for a year. I'm good, you know. Like uh, I can do to that. But if say you were more, you weren't throw it off like that. You were more devout, okay? And you uh, because you need to have your personal sins taken care of. So uh, in, in in the Levitical uh, book of Leviticus, it it told you how you did that. There were certain animals you had to bring certain offerings. Okay, so um, say. Uh, I'm just throwing this out there. Say you had a problem with uh, sex lust, okay? You know, lust, uh, coveting your neighbor's wife or something like that. Okay, so, like, um, you you sinned, so you needed to tear uh, your sacrifice to the priest for the forgiveness of sin. 
Well, like, what if you had a real problem with it? Okay, so like, uh, uh, like your neighbor's wife is out, she lived there, and like, you know, it happened again. So now you got to go take another goat and go to the priest. And if you really had a problem with it, like, pretty soon you're gonna run out of animals. Okay, and uh, it's uh, like you you can see where this is going. Like, it's uh, it's it's like a thing. Like, uh, okay, so like if like how would you, like if you had to tell your wife like uh, I saw uh, I saw Delilah out in the yard and uh, I had a bad thought and I'm gonna have to take another goat uh, and you know can you imagine telling your wife that and uh, so it's it's like people would people would have to like people weren't taking care of that stuff they they would like uh, uh, like I don't want to say anything and uh, you know pride would get in the way and they would take care of the, that sacrifice so. Um, it, it wasn't the best system, like, sounds like her system, but uh, especially if people didn't know that you had committed sin, uh, you know, would you just try to get away with it? But anyway, uh, back to uh, so in burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, you had no pleasure. Like, they, God wants a contrite heart, He wants a, a, penit a penit uh, penitent heart that. Uh, the one who's really asking forgiveness of sin, and so uh, if if you you're not wholeheartedly asking, you know it's not going to be forgiven. God has no pleasure in it. Any pleasure in continuously sacrificing animals over and over and over again for sin, and uh, uh, and in the system that it was, but it was uh, it was a system that He had set up until the perfect comes, which is uh, Jesus His Son. So. Um, it says, then I say, oh, I have come. In the body of the book, it is written me to do your will, O oh God. So, um, and if, if you don't mind turning, uh, I can read it, read it for you. Turn to uh, Isaiah 46. Isaiah chapter 46. Yeah, I'm sorry, Isaiah 61, my bad, Isaiah 61. That was going to go in the work way. Isaiah 61 and verse 1. And uh, this, when, when Jesus came out of the temptation in the desert, and he went into the temple in uh, at, at the synagogue in uh, um, Nazareth, and every little town had their own had your own uh, synagogue, the local local assembly, and uh, you know, kind of like Rock Springs. But anyway, uh, he went in, and then every uh, uh, every time they met, someone would be assigned a reading. So they would bring the scroll or the book uh, the, uh, uh, of the Torah, and when it was your time to read, you would read a passage out of that. So they handed the scroll to Jesus, and here's what he read. He said, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor, he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim, proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. So he finished reading that and sat down. So check this out, like, uh, proclaim liberty to the captives and open the prison, opening of the prison to those who are bound. Remember, we were talking about that when you break the law, uh, you know, you're going to pay for that. And so uh, Jesus came to abolish the law, uh, but not, not to abolish it, but to offer a better way to, um, to, uh, to uh, 
bring the new covenant. Okay, and so um, and the new covenant was to do to do the will of God. So verse eight, previously saying sacrifice and offering, burnt offerings and offerings for sin, you did not desire nor had pleasure in them, which are offered according to the law. And then he said, Behold, I have come to do your will, O God. So like we were saying that Jesus was a perfect child, okay? Now, every time he was asked to do something, he stepped up to it. And so, like, it started out easy. Like, uh, you don't climb the big mountain first without taking little steps to get to it uh, and in little victories. So, uh, just like uh, Jesus started out and his parents asked him to do something, he willfully did it. Uh, and, just, uh, and then when his ministry started, things got a little bit harder until he got the garden of Gethsemane, and then he says, Lord, if it be thy will, take this cup from me, but yet not my will, but thy will be done. So what he did, he stepped into that, and uh, so he was uh, constantly moving up into that to do the will of God. And um, uh, for instance, like when he was uh, when uh, on the Passover, when his parents took him, and he stayed behind the temple, and he said, uh, I, uh, I and he explained to his parents that um, when didn't you know I'd be in my father's house that uh, I, it's my father's business. And so he was already, uh, at that, that age, he was probably about 12 years old and about 13, you're a bar mitzvah, which means you become a man in the Jewish faith. So uh, he was already uh, confounding the teachers there with his wisdom and uh, but he was doing the will of God. And so he takes away the first, which is the old covenant, and brings the new covenant. The old covenant was the sacrifices for sin that uh, were continuously year after year after year, which never made perfect. He could never approach God with that. And so now he brings the new covenant, which by his death on the cross, now we can approach God. Okay, so um, by that will, we have been sanctified through the offering of the, of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. So when, when we come together and we believe in God, we're justified. Ju we're made right by God's eyes because we accept the Lord Jesus Christ as, uh, as propitiation, uh, 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 um, the satisfying requirement of our sin. And then once we're justified, then we're sanctified. We're set apart. We're holy. Set apart unto God. That's what sanctified means holy and set apart. And then it's a process. And we're growing as, uh, as, as we're going towards the day when we finally go home. We're continuously being sanctified more and more uh, until the time comes when, uh, when God calls us home. And it's a process. And, and you know, sometimes, you know, uh, we're, it's, it's a testing process. You know, we're being tested and continuously uh, Sometimes a little, sometimes a big test, like a joke test. And uh, sometimes you've got to walk through the fire. And, uh, and uh, your testing produces endurance. Like uh, you can't just run, go out and run a 20K marathon without working up to it. And just like, you know, your faith has to be tested. A faith that can't be uh, tested, can't be trusted. And so God will take you through these testing and refine you so by fire so you'll become pure, pure as gold. And uh, for God says, you know, be holy as I am holy. So you're being sanctified in this process. Uh, uh, and uh, so uh, this testing makes you stronger, makes your faith stronger. So, um, and, and when, like, just, just face it, you know, when, when the evil one comes, uh, and, you know, are you able to stand? And uh, like with Job, Job, Job really brought uh, Satan, uh, went before God, and, uh, of course, he couldn't do anything without God's permission. God, uh, God allowed him to really test Satan. I mean, to to, to test Job, to test Job. And uh, you know, Job, uh, he said, "Though he slay me, I'll I'll still worship him. I'll still serve him." So um, that's this testing and this sanctification process. And in verse eleven, and every priest stands ministering daily and offering repeatedly the same sacrifices which can never take away sin. So the priest stood and, uh, and uh, continuously uh, through the Levitical uh, 
um, instruction that they were given, did these sacrifices every day uh, or, or every every time. Uh, it just depended uh, if it was a high holiday or if somebody just came uh, with a sin offering or whatever. That um, uh, that it, it was never taken care of. It was just repeatedly over and over and over again. They never really could do sins. All they would just cover it up until Jesus came. But this man, Christ Jesus, he after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God. And on the cross, he said, Tetestai, it is finished. It is finished and paid in full, once and for all, with the result that past, present, and future, the sins were paid for. So that's why in the Old Testament, when uh, even back in the, um, in the Garden of Eden, when God uh, sold the animal skins together, it was just a covering. So Jesus came where he paid for all the sins of all the Old Testament people, present sins and future sins. Everyone has come once and for all, never having to be sacrificed again. That sacrifice was good enough in completion forever. So, but this man, Christ Jesus, after he offered one sacrifice for sin forever, sat down at the right hand of God, from that time waiting till his enemies are made his footstool. Okay, so his enemies, there's all the people that uh, uh, that slandered the name of God, blasphemed the name of God, lived their life for themselves, uh, caring about the things for God, uh, rejecting the gospel, re uh, rejecting anything that has to do with life, um, just living a life of evil. Okay, so um, those are the enemies of God. And one day, one day, every one of them will stand before God and every tongue will confess. And every knee will every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. And, uh, and at that time, they will know that, uh, that their rightful place is going to be in the lake fire for, uh, uh, for, uh, for not accepting the Lord's sacrifice for them. This is what we were just talking about. Okay, yeah, verse 15. But the Holy Spirit also witnesses to us, for after he had said before, this is the covenant that I will make with them. After those days, says the Lord, I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds I will write them. Then he adds, their sins and their lawless deeds, I will remember no more. And so if, if you don't mind, turn to Jeremiah chapter 31 and verse 33, 33 and 34. Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 33 and 34. Or I can, uh, if you want to just want to write down, uh, I'll read to you. Uh, I'll start at 31. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their father in the day that I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt. My covenant stay broke, though I was a husband, them, says the Lord. But this is the only thing I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law in their minds. I will write it on their heart. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No more, no more shall each man teach his neighbor, and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall know me from the least of them to the greatest of them, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and their sin. I will remember no more. So, as it is now, God. God writes his law on the tablets of our, not on tablets of stone like the Ten Commandments, but on the tablets of our heart and, um, and in our minds. You know, we're, we, uh, we're, uh, we're being transformed, transformed by the renewing of our minds that, uh, that through the word of God that, uh, that 
we're in the sanctification process that um, that that now we're not under the old law of goats and bulls that are being sacrificed, but we have a high priest that sat down at the right hand of God that paid for us in once and for all. So in verse 18, now where there is remission of sin, sins, there is no longer an offering for sin. There is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. And when, uh, when God forgives our sins, okay, it's not like, uh, it's not like, uh, like say a husband and wife, okay, and they have an argument, okay, and the husband says, you know, I forgive you, okay, and then, but then, like, later on, like, maybe later on, a couple months later, whatever, they have an argument again, to bring the sin back up again, like, or, or the unforgiven part was supposed to be forgiven, and bring it up again. God is not like that. When he forgives a sin, okay, it goes like in the sea of forgiveness. He puts up a sign that says no fishing. I mean, it's not remembered anymore as far as the east is from the west. God will never bring that sin up again. Okay, and then of course we're called to uh, to use First John nine keep keep short accounts. Like if John one nine says, if we are faithful, he is faith. If we confess our sins, that he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from unrighteousness. Okay, so uh, when we ask for forgiveness. We're cleansed from that sin, and um, even though that sin is forgiven, we still need to cite our sin to net it, and then it's put under a, a blade at the foot of the cross and be totally forgiven. So, um, First John one nine is not a license to sin. Um, in my, uh, I want to say unsaved state, I thought I was, I thought I was saved, but uh, uh, I really have no assurance of now that I look back at it, that uh, I would drink pretty good, uh, like every day, and like I would come home after work or whatever, and, uh, and get hammered. And then like the next morning, I would whip out first John 1, nine, ask for forgiveness of my sins, so I'm good. And then that night, do the same thing again. Over and over and over again. And Paul says, shall we continue to sin so grace may abound? No. Like that's, uh, once, you know, once Christ has died for our sins, so we don't sacrifice him over and over again, that uh, if we habitually sin, it says in Galatians, if we habitually keep on committing these sins, then uh, we will not inherit the kingdom of God. So like I have absolutely no assurance of my salvation whatsoever. But, now uh, that um, now that uh, I have full assurance of my, my salvation because uh, of that passage that uh, that's in Galatians, and so moving on to uh, verse nineteen. Uh, Therefore, brother, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new living way consecrated for us through the veil that is His. Blood. Okay, so um, back in the Old Testament times, only the high priest, and once a year they uh, uh, they had a high priest, but um, uh, once a year could the high priest go in to the Holy of Holies and offer a sac offer and sacrifice for the people and sprinkle blood on the altar. And then to and you can just, Jesus couldn't just uh, dance right on in there. I mean, through many washings, uh, garment changes, a uh, penitent heart. I mean, because you walk in there with any sin, like God struck you dead. Like, there was, you weren't playing around. Like, that's the holy of holies where God, the place where God at that time occupied and uh, where the uh, Ark of the Covenant was. And so, uh, uh, so like now that now because of what Jesus did for us. You know, he consecrated us through the veil and separate the Holy of Holies, okay? There was a big, thick veil. It was uh, uh, maybe 20 feet high, uh, 30, uh, Lord, if I'm not mistaken, about 30 feet long. And it's hard to find out what, how thick it was. Uh, I think Joe Chippa said it was maybe about four inches thick. But what he did say was, like, he just couldn't pull it apart. It was made of, like, 72 pieces that were, like, woven together. And... Uh, 
So on the cross, when Jesus was dying for our sins, and uh, and it was finished, he cried out, uh, it is finished. Uh, the temple veil was torn in two from the bottom, showing us from God to man that uh, we could now walk freely into the Holy of Holies. We had free access to God. Jesus was the door. And now we can go through Jesus the door to get to God because of the access that he made. By, uh, because when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we're covered with his blood. We're covered by the blood of Christ. So when God looks at us, he doesn't see our simple self. He sees the blood of Christ. He sees his own son covering us. And so through Jesus' flesh, he tore the veil. And so now he is the door. We can go in through him. And having a high priest, verse 21, over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Okay, so Jesus as being our high priest, okay, now and what he did, what he accomplished, the work that he accomplished on the cross for us, now we can draw near to God with a true heart, like a true heart that's after a uh, man after God's own heart. Okay, and uh, and uh, and then in full assurance of faith, okay, having our hearts sprinkled in evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Pure water, the water of the word, that, that we're constantly being cleansed and purified uh, that uh, through his word and through uh, his atoning death, that we have full assurance, okay? So uh, being saved in Christ, we have full assurance of our salvation. Uh, if you're not a believer, you, I can assure you, you have no assurance of your salvation. That, uh, that uh, one day you'll stand before God, and uh, um, and there, there is, uh, you'll have to give an account for your sins. And if, and if uh, uh, you don't have Christ, Christ covering. If you don't, you're not a believer in Jesus Christ, and you don't have that forgiveness, then you have to stand at home marriage. You have to pay for that yourself. Verse 23, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, without going back. For he who promised is faithful. Okay, so uh, there's there was never, there's never been one time that God hasn't kept one of his promises. I mean, if he did, if there's one time that he keep a promise, then you could say, well, man, like back here, like, can't keep that promise. I don't know. Like, uh, like and just check this out. Like, uh, our salvation, like, well, he says we're saved. Uh, that, that promise. So, like, but that faith is never after promising. And here are many promises of God. He keeps all of them. We can count them all. We can take them to the bank. That I uh, cash them, and, and there's money in the bank to cover these places. And uh, when he says that, uh, uh, let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering. And uh, God, God is not like He's not a shifting shadow. Okay, so like, um, and he, it says Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God never changes. I mean, if he did, like, uh, uh, and and like, say you died, okay, like, but it was, uh, and and like, you wouldn't know what day, like, is it a good day for God or is it a bad day for God? Like, uh, how was he feeling this day? Like, man, I shouldn't have died on this day because yesterday would have been a better better day to die on. But no, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Like, we know exactly what to expect. Like, God never changes, so we can take him at his word. And it's not like some tyrant or dictator. Like you never know, uh, you never know what uh, what to expect because a God in this in this book is everything that God wants us to know. There's nothing that God wants us to know that isn't in this book, or He would have added it to it. So God is not a shifting shadow. He never changes, and what He promises, He is faithful. And verse 24. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. Not forsaking assembling ourselves together is, is the manner of some exhorting one another 
and so much more as you see the day approaching. Okay, like there's two warning others in that. Okay, and uh, and that's like church, like the uh, um, like the Acts church. You know, we're uh, one another each other, helping each other, helping each other, helping each other out. And uh, and uh, check this out. So like uh, this, uh, this just came to me and uh, the other day, and and I wrote it down. And, and it's a lot. Okay, so like. Uh, and you take this up with God, like, like some people say, well, uh, there's, there's, you know, like some people can't go to church because of their job, okay? And then some people, uh, you know, they say, well, like I don't have to go to church. I can, I can worship God at home, or I could, uh, I could read my Bible at home, or you know, creation speaks to me to God. I don't have to be there. But when we assemble together, okay, we encourage, encourage one another. Okay, all the more they approach it, okay? And so uh, uh, maybe somebody's going through something and then the day you're there, you encourage that person, okay? What if you weren't there? If you weren't that day, that person that needed encouragement you were gonna bring doesn't have it. And so um, check this out, okay? And uh, like you take it up with the Lord. But anyway, uh, like if you're on Zoom right now, okay, and you have a, a blacked out screen, okay, that, um, like, I can't see, I'm, I'm not being encouraged by that, like, I can't see you're there, okay, and, like, and that would give me much encouragement, you were there, like, sometimes I'm prayer meeting, uh, like, it looks like nobody there, I mean, you see a name, like, uh, uh, like, and then you think, well, like, are they, why, why can't I see them, like, are you are you ready for chip? I mean, are you? Uh, I know we can't meet together, but like you wouldn't go just with a bag over your head. I mean, you you uh, you would go like that's nice, okay? Show up for worship. You're there to worship God, okay? So like, uh, if you're got a black on screen, like, are you home in your sights and your sweats, or like, are you just listening? Or are you doing another job? I mean, it's like that's between you and God. But like, I'm talking about like encouraging one another in, okay? That's all the more as we see the day approaching. But you saw the early Acts church, they were meeting together and building each other up. And there was persecution. But we're moving with a time of persecution now. There's a lot of persecution that's going on. Look at, look at California. They don't want to let people, little by little, they don't want to let people worship it. Little by little, your rights are being taken away. Okay? And, uh, and it looks like one of the rights they're going after is our right to worship. Okay, so uh, uh, and and this little victory leads to a bigger victory, leads to a bigger victory, leads to pretty soon we'll be in a basement. That's okay. Okay, uh, uh, this this verse here just spoke to me like um, uh, about encouraging one another. Are we there for one another? Are we meeting needs to one of those needs. Okay, and like check this out. God hates hypocrisy. He hates it. Like uh, earlier, I was talking about like the church meeting and eating, eating the needs of others, and then right after that, uh, I think it's in chapter five uh, uh, that Ananias and Sapphira, okay, deceived the church by saying they sold their property and um, uh, and they brought the money to the church. They deceived the church by letting, making them think that they gave all the money for the property. God killed them. God killed them for their hypocrisy. God hates hypocrisy. Are you being a hypocrite? I mean, uh, back then, early church, uh, God was going to let that early church start because if that hypocrisy got in, it was like leaven getting in, just living in all love. That um, that God wasn't going to let the early church start with that. So that was dealt with right away and strictly. But God just still it like yesterday, same yesterday, today, and forever. Like He still hates hypocrisy. You're gonna be for that. You're gonna you're you're not gonna be blessed for that if you're if you're a hypocrite. And um, so, verse 26. If we if we sin willfully after we receive the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice of sins. And that's why I was telling you about the First uh, John one nine thing, and that uh, you know if 
that's that's how license is in. Like uh, uh, if 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 it's it's like counting what the Lord did for us as no account. Like when Jesus uh, Jesus would say, "Your sins are forgiven. Go sin no more." Okay, that doesn't mean your sins are forgiven. Just go ahead and go on like you were doing. No, you change uh, like uh, uh, like change your uh, your way of thinking that um, that yeah I'm forgiven but I don't want to do that anymore like I don't want my pride to get in the way that um, to where I can't I can't change and uh, and I'm not going to do anything about what just happened that um, that uh, The sacrifice for that Jesus made on the cross, God gave us everything. Everything. He gave us his best. He gave us his one and only son. Jesus paid for it with his very life. Everything. The wrath that we deserve was poured on him. Poured on him. He took it. Like we owe him that. We owe him. Like like the song. What if I gave everything? Are we giving everything? Are we give it everything to God. Okay, so verse 26, if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sin, but a certain fearful expectation of judgment and fiery indignation, which will devour the adversary. Okay, so um, that's talking about going to hell. Okay, so if you, if, if you are, if you are, continuously, habitually sinning against God time after time after time, you're probably not saved, okay? And uh, there's no assurance. So when you stand before God, don't be surprised if you're sentenced to the lake of fire. Okay, so, um, and which the fiery indignation will devour the adversaries, the enemies of God. As we're talking about what God puts enemies under his footstool. The one that the ones that are blaspheming, the ones that have evil thinking, evil lives, and uh, um, just like uh, I was talking about hypocrisy. Check this out. Like the um, just get back to that for a minute. Like the scribes and the Pharisees. Okay, they they had evil thinking in their mind. They had evil evil hearts. Okay, they they Jesus called them whitewashed tombs. They were all clean on the outside. But inside they were like dead man's bones. They uh, uh, people look they look good on the outside. They like the, the greetings in the marketplace. They like the cheap seat in the synagogues and uh, um, and and uh, all the benefits and blessings of uh, the high office that they hold. They were evil. They were evil thinking. And so um, that's just continuing to sin that thing. This evil in their heart where they never were with God. Okay, they looked like they were on the outside, but they weren't on the inside. You know, God knows the heart. Like that's that's the difference between God and like man. You know, you on the outside, you see the character of the people, and you can judge a little bit. But God knows the heart. Like check this out. David was a man uh, 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 after God's own heart. Okay, so David, he was a murderer. Okay, he uh, sinned with Bathsheba. Yet. To God, a sin is sin, okay? And so, like, uh, one sin is is just as bad as another to God. But God knew his heart. He knew he knew he knew he had a heart of God. And so that that was like these Pharisees did, okay? And so uh, and like Paul, who was Saul previously, and we just just heard in Acts where they were laying coats at his feet to stone Stephen, okay? And so Paul was a murderer. God knew his heart. He knew the plans he had for him, and he changed, and and uh, uh, he on Damascus Road um, saw what he did to Paul. You know, let that be of us. Let us from uh, our saw in Paul. God can do that. So, uh, verse twenty-eight: Anyone who has rejected Moses' law dies without mercy. The testimony of two or three witnesses without mercy. They stoned him to death. They took him down in the center of town. They stoned him, not with little pebbles, but with big rocks. 
and they, 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 they killed him, okay? What do you think is going to happen when you stand for God? Without mercy, like you can, you can cry, you can beg, you bleed all you want, but it's not going to, it's not going to change anything. That, um, that you're going to stand in your own merits if you're not saved by the blood of Christ. Of how, verse 29, of how much worse punishment do you suppose will, will be thought worthy who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, counted the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified a common thing and insulted the spirit of grace? Think about our brothers and sisters like uh, uh are are we are we doing that? Are we are we seriously are we are we trying every day are we waking up and like wanting to serve God and, and just 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 wanting to do what you know God's will is for us and uh, and not counting the blood of the covenant by which we are being we are being by a kind thing. I mean it was huge what Jesus did for us on the cross. Are we insulting the spirit of grace? Are we insulting the Holy Spirit? Are we grieving the Holy Spirit? Are we to know the Holy Spirit with what we do? Are we willful sinning? I mean, uh, uh, sin is, you know, something we want to do. We did it. Okay, we consciously did it. We, we wanted to do it, and we did it. Okay, and uh, uh, all the more, as, as we're being sanctified, that stuff should be falling off. And uh, you shouldn't be looking the same. Your life should be changed. Your life should be being transformed day by day, day by day. But renew of your mind, renew of your body. For we know him who says to the Lord, which is who said, excuse me. For we know him who said, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. And again, the Lord will judge his people it is a fearful thing to fall in the hands of the living God. And so, uh, okay, in First First Timothy six sixteen it says, speaking of the King of Kings, Lord of Lords, who alone possesses immortality and dwells in unapproachable light, whom no man can see or has seen. Okay, so like you ever been driving, you ever been driving like, uh, uh, early in the morning, and, like the sun's in your eyes, and you're like, you like this, you know, and like it's it's just blinding you. Okay, like the light that God has is like so bright, pure, holy, blinding that immediately you're gonna be on your face. I mean, that's uh, that's that's where God sits. He sits in that. That's all he is, okay? And so, um, in Revelation 4, it speaks of a multicolored rainbow around the throne. And from the throne proceeds flashes of lightning and sounds and peals of thunder. I mean, can you imagine standing there and right in front of the throne and all this, like, have you ever been in a thunderstorm and had lightning strike near you? Okay, or, or, Big thunder, like big, ro like rolling thunder, like check that out, okay? And uh, Isaiah, Isaiah 6, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, lofty and exalted, with the train of his robe filling the temple, with four living creatures standing in the presence of the Lord, with their eyes covered, because they can't look on the holiness and the brilliance of his Shekinah glory. Can you imagine that? You imagine his robe filling the temple? Like you can't even get in the temple because his robe is in there. Okay, and then these creatures that stand in the presence of him day and night to say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. They can look, they've got to cover their eyes, they've got to cover their feet. That's how holy God is. That's the God we serve. And the foundations of the thresholds tremble at the voice of him who called out why the temple filled with smoke. Like the foundations of the temple are trembling. Like, is it going to fall down on me? Like, am I going to be crushed? Smoke. Like, can't even see what's going on. Okay, considering all that, okay, you will one day face 
whether you admit it or not, whether you want to or not, the one true living God. Don't wait till you're on your deathbed to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior because you may not get to see one. You die today. You die tomorrow. You die in an hour. You'd have a heart attack. So, so deadly is sin. So destructive. Okay. Take smoking. Okay. Smoking, for example. All right. Like when you, you're young, you smoke. Everything's good. Okay. But you start getting like lesions on your, on your lungs. You start getting emphysema, COPD. See, sin takes toll. Okay. It's like sin in your life. Pretty soon, okay, you're, uh, uh, you're you're being punished by God. Okay, first of all, you're you're not blessed by God. You're you're under His wrath. Okay, and uh, pretty soon you're gonna lose your house, your car, your family. Your everything is near and dear to you. Sin has consequences, and it adds up. One thing God is not is God is not a God of second chance. Okay, when you stand before him, okay, you're not going to be able to eat and cry your way uh, into heaven. Okay, because um, if you waited that long to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, everything you did was for your own selfishness. You never, you never did to serve the living God for him, who God is. Okay, so uh, what happens is now you see that your punishment awaits you. Now you want to come to God. Now you want to be good. No, you're going to be judged on your own merits, on your own deeds, because you haven't accepted the one true sacrifice for you. And you'll not be able to excuse yourself in front of him. Picture, picture this, picture your loving mother, okay? Check this out. Picture your loving mother. gave you life, okay? Gave you everything, by everything. The air that you breathe, just how about that? How about food that you eat? How about clothes on your back? How about a roof over your head? How about a vehicle? How about a job? How about how about uh, everything that you need? Uh, everything that you need, okay? And that you never acknowledge him, you never pray to him, you never go to him, uh, you never thank him, you never uh, uh, you never worship him. You uh, you just uh, you just take it take it all for granted, okay? So um, gave you the very best, his only son. He gave you his son, Lord Jesus. The Best, he gave the best that he had. The wages of sin is death. It's, it's appointed once to man, for man to die and then the judgment. If you have not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, today is the day. Today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. You take your heart of stone and turn it into a heart of flesh. I promise you. You will not be disappointed that um, uh, Jesus, as we talked, the G3 conference, he came through a virgin by the power of the Holy Spirit, grew up as a child, was sinless his entire life. Every temptation known to man, he faced and, and was sinless. When he came, he came, he gave us everything, he told us how we're to live. Uh, he showed us uh, what God is like, what the Father is like. He was the plan for our lives. He said that I, um, uh, I came to give life and life abundantly. Okay, and so he went. He checked us out. This gets me. Okay, so uh, remember when uh, Pontius Pilate uh, came out and he told the Jews, hey, "We have one uh, uh, tradition on Passover Reese." release a man and uh because he didn't want he didn't want to punish jesus he knew jesus was innocent but his wife had told him have nothing to do with them or i had a dream that he's innocent and so uh he said that uh i'll release i'll release someone for you do you want me to release a rabbit who is a murderer or jesus and the pharisees were ginning up the crowd saying that they wanted rabbits released the murderer okay Probably Jesus and Barabbas were in the same cell, okay? And then Barabbas, knowing he's a murderer, over Jesus, knowing Jesus didn't do anything, started all quiet and silent, and uh, uh, and 
uh, thinking about what he's going to have to go through. And they, uh, uh, the guard comes and says, Rabbits, you're free to go. Okay? And, and so Barabbas gets, I'm free to go. I'm, I'm good. So he starts walking out. But then he glances back and he looks at Jesus. Man, it gets me. And then Jesus, knowing he's innocent, and he was going to pay for his crime, that he set him free. Don't take that lightly, that Jesus died on the cross for our sins. He has all the sins of mankind were poured out on the Son of God. He became me. He became you. He became uh, every person, everyone that sinned. Like we were talking about, he was the one sacrifice for sin. God poured his entire wrath that was due us. The penalty of our sin, the payment for our sin on the Son. He cried out. He screamed out. It was dark. And uh, he was screaming. And he wasn't screaming because of swords, uh, uh, for the, because of whips. And, uh, and uh, the punishment that he received, he was crying out because of separation from God the Father while the sin, because God turned back on him while he crushed him. He was crushed for our duty. He was crushed for our sin. And, uh, and then when it was finished, after, after it got dark for three hours, the temple was torn to make our way, making a week from the God. When it was finished, he cried out uh, in his face. He gave his spirit. He said, I have my life. I have the authority to lay it down. I have the authority to pick it back up again. He laid down his life. He died and was put into a borrowed tomb. It was borrowed because he wasn't going to need it for long. And then on the third day, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he rose again, proving to God, or proving to all, that he is the Son of God, that God was satisfied with this payment. Is just payment for our sins, and that if we put our faith and trust in Him, if we ask for if we ask for forgiveness, if we uh, if, if we believe that He is the Son of God, we believe in our heart, confess with our mouth, He is the Son of God, that we will have eternal life. And uh, that once and for all, we are a friend of God and not an enemy of God anymore. And brothers and sisters. Uh, if you haven't made that decision, today is the day. Don't 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 let this pass by you. If somehow, some way that what I said is spoken to you, and um, and I know we're not getting together. Uh, if you need, if if I, I'll just talk with anybody. I'll be. Uh, we have other brothers and sisters that uh, if you just want to know more about. How can I have this Jesus? How can I how, how can I have a promise of salvation? You know, maybe I wasn't maybe I wasn't serving God in the right. Maybe it was uh, maybe I was uh, you know habitually sinning and I'm not right. I want to be right, and and so take take this opportunity. Don't let it pass you by. You may not have an event. People are dying all the time. Of this uh, this uh, COVID this. Uh, this uh, virus is going around, and uh, and today, if you hear my voice, it's not too late. It's the opportunity. Anyway, uh, Lord, and sisters, I want to thank you for uh, for this opportunity to speak speak to you, and uh, I just want to close in prayer. Almighty Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus. Thank you so much for uh, that you gave me the opportunity to speak for you today. That uh, uh, I, I pray that, that nobody heard my voice, but they heard yours, and that uh, and they they applied this to their heart and their soul. That um, that you do a mighty work, Heavenly Father. That if there's people out there that are not yours, that you would prick their heart. Start telling them right now to turn one true living God that um, uh, that you're there for them right now that you have a, a hope and a future for their lives and uh, you don't desire uh, uh, to put condemnation and wrath on them but you want them to come to you uh, or where they can be laden and you God says he'll give you rest. 
I thank you for um, for all the people that are assembled here today. I ask that you would bless them. I ask that you would fill their cup. Heavenly Father, I ask you would heal those who are still sick with this virus. Heavenly Father, I pray that um, uh, that all that are having a need and are are troubled by something that that you would eat that. Heavenly Father, that um, Lord Jesus, thank you for dying for sins. Thank you for taking our place on us. Thank you for being all, all to us. Our, and just like that, this is song, song says, you know, help us, help, Lord, we just want to give everything. We don't want to build these little castles in the sand. We just want to live for you. And if I us to do that today, in the name of all our names, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Okay, so um, 